Hello beautiful creators, Rebecca here, your vibe mentor, bringing you another video on how to raise your vibration so you can live your best life. So I have for you today a list of things that kind of created those aha moments for me um, over the last 10-15 years um, since my awakening, probably about 15 years ago now. Um, Moments that made me say, why didn't they teach me that in school? So if you've watched any of my videos, heard me tell my story, you'll find that I say that a lot. It's like another one, like why didn't they teach me that in school? So unfortunately, we live in a society today that doesn't value these things. I think it should be illegal to not teach them, but somehow they, they get away with it. So for now, I'm here to share it with you in case you weren't aware or as a suggestion of things to teach your kids. So. We, we all have different life circumstances that we grow up with. Some people have parents who are really awesome and they teach them all of these things and they don't struggle because it's not taught in school. And that really is how it should go is it, ideally, or at least, you know, 20, probably 50 years ago, it was a different world where we had one parent at home who was primarily focused on maintaining the home and raising the kids. And unfortunately today, a lot of people don't have that luxury where both parents have to work and the kids uh, have to rely on our education system. So if you happen to be one of those people, this list may be um, redundant for you. If not, um, here we go. So. Number one is everybody's a genius. Everybody is a genius in their own right. We all have innate talents and gifts. We are perfectly imperfect. Uh, we are made for the purpose that we were put here for and our gifts and our innate talents are uh, what creates that genius or what leads to that life purpose that we are designed for. So if you're trying to be Michael Jordan, you're always gonna be second best. Michael Jordan, if he tried to be you, would always be second best because nobody is going to be as great at your unique set of qualities and gifts as you are. But we are not taught to look for these things or to start the process of alchemy that is required because it, it's a, a lifelong process of figuring out what am I good at, what are my passions, what, what gifts do I have to offer, and how can I use them to contribute to the world. And so when we can start that process early on in life, which is why I think this should be taught in schools, we will get to a place where we're ready and we're really strong in who we are and we're ready to contribute to society by the time we're 18 or 20. Unfortunately, a lot of us are starting out um, midway through life, which is okay, we've gotta start somewhere and that's why I'm here is to help you find your genius and how to start living your purpose so that you can truly have peace and happiness because if we don't tap into this, some people get lucky, they stumble into their passion and they pursue it. Um, but if we don't, uh, we will we will suffer. And there will be always something missing, always that, that hole in our hearts that we try to fill with addiction or shopping or social media or other numbing mechanisms. So I am gonna try to keep this succinct. So we might breeze through a lot of these things a little bit quicker. So. You are a creator. Remember that you're a creator. You are a genius and you are here to create your life and that life should be enjoyable and fun. And when you can tap into your genius, you become a necessary, well, you're already a necessary component of the, the whole. We all collectively need everyone to be in their genius, to be in their joy and to be contributing so that we can create uh, a better uh, environment for everyone to enjoy. Um, number two is core beliefs. Our core beliefs shape our thoughts, which shape our emotions, which shape our actions, which shape our personality, which shapes our reality. So we really need to be aware that core beliefs are at the foundation of everything we say, think, and do. And while they are not necessarily something we consciously choose zero to seven, if we are taught that they are there, we don't one even know they're there, and two, we don't realize we can choose them consciously, but if we can start to understand what our core beliefs are, identify the negative ones, and replace them with positive ones, we can start to act with intention, create with intention, and live a life that we actually love, that we want, and that we create, instead of living on autopilot, coming from a place of subconscious core beliefs, 
acting out in our lives and creating things that make us unhappy and we don't even understand why. So core beliefs need to be something we're aware of and we choose consciously. Emotions, number three, they are not intended to be held on to. They are supposed to pass through our body. They should be like water rolling under a bridge. If a emotion comes from a negative core belief and an untrue thought, it's going to be deceptive because it feels like we should act on it when really we shouldn't. So emotions are kind of like um, red flags. They're like, hey, pay attention to me. So if somebody treats you poorly and speaks to you unkindly and you have a negative emotion, that negative emotion says, that's not right. I need to stand up for myself or I need to move away from this person. There is an action being requested of that. When you act on that, you take care of it, you nurture yourself, you come back to love and say that was inappropriate, that was more about them than it was about me, I'm gonna let this go, then that emotion has been handled prop uh, yes, properly. If we hold on to the emotion and we say that person didn't like me, therefore I'm a bad person, there's something wrong with me, we're holding on to that emotion and it's gonna stay within our body and then there's gonna be a buildup and eventually we're gonna cause disease, disease in the body because we're not letting go of emotions. Feelings can be very similar, we have to be very careful with them. Feelings are not always true. But when they are true, when they're coming from a place of a positive core belief and we're having positive thoughts about them or true thoughts about them, the feeling can be an indicator of what's right for us or not right for us. So I've talked before about when you're in a situation, you have to make a decision, you're not sure what to do. If you're able to take the time to try it on, try on the different scenarios, try on, is this right for me? Imagine that you have made the choice to yes, do this thing and sit with it for a minute. What does your life look like after you have said yes to this thing? How does that feel? And then on the other side, sit with not doing it. Imagine what your life would look like if you didn't make that decision or you didn't do that thing. How does that feel? And that indicator of a good feeling or a negative feeling is going to be your your guiding factor. If it feels right, it's right for you. If it doesn't feel right, it's not right for you. So again, handle feelings with a healthy dose of responsibility and know that your thoughts can lie to you and feelings can be unfounded. But feelings are not to be stuffed down. They're not to be ignored. They are, again, information, they're, they're messengers, right? They're telling us, do I need to do something about this? Is this right for me? And then we let that go. Everything needs to pass through. We should not be holding on to anything. We need energy to flow. We are electromagnetic beings. If we are not grounded, we will frazzle out. If we are holding on to too much energy, we will explode. It's, it's just like um, your television system. Um, not that a TV is a system. Anyways, <laughs> um, language and thoughts. So that's five and six. They're kind of related, so I'm going to tackle them together. When you speak something out loud, you solidify it. You make it more real. When you say, I am strong, and you're working out, and you've hit a wall, and you said, no, I'm strong. I'm not done yet. I'm going to push through. This feels good. My muscles are getting stronger. I love this, right? We feel better. We feel stronger. If we hit that wall and we're like, oh, I'm too weak. My muscles hurt. I'm too tired. I can't, right? Notice the depression in the body as well. Then we feel crappy. Those words will create more or less energy, more positive energy or more negative energy. And the same with thoughts. Thoughts are real things. We're creating with our thoughts and with our words. Our words are our magic. We literally are creating with our thoughts and our words. So, Thoughts are real things in the brain. They literally, it's called a dendrite. It's a structure in your brain that grows and when it gets bigger, it's kind of like a tree. It, it branches out and they interconnect. And when we have a thought pattern, we are strengthening that dendrite. It actually starts like a little nub and then it gets a little bit bigger and then it grows into a tree. And the more habitual a thought pattern, the bigger the structure in the brain. Now, the beauty is that we can grow new ones by giving it our attention and focus. The more we think a thought, the more it grows. The less we think a thought, the more it dissipates. It literally turns into hot air and disappears. So we need to be really careful because we are creating with our thoughts and we are creating with our words. Thoughts are electromagnetic. 
they, the, they use the encephalograph, if I'm saying that right, and that is outside of the brain. They can measure brain waves outside of the brain without even touching the head because these electromagnetic waves are out there. They're percolating out of us. I'm not sure the term I'm looking for, but you know what I mean? So think about the term electromagnetic, right? There is a frequency and a wave of the electricity, and there's a magnetism that draws to it a similar frequency. So when you're putting these thoughts and these words out there, you are creating, and we need to create with conscious intention. We need to be aware of our thoughts, one, and we need to choose them consciously. Now remember, that when a particle is observed, it changes. So our observation, just the pure awareness of the thought will start to change the pattern. We get to choose consciously when we have awareness. Um, what else do I have for you? Seven is focus. Again, where your focus goes, grows. So it's similar to those thoughts. The more you think it, the more you create it, the more focus you give something, the more it's gonna grow. If you ignore it, it's gonna die, just like a plant feed it and it will grow ignore it and it will die um, create with intention again only focus on what you want to grow eight again is attention uh, not again but intention so what you do comes from some sort of intention everything we do everything we say everywhere we go um, every piece of clothing that we choose the food we cook all of it has an underlying intention and the crazy part is we often don't realize what our intention is. We're not aware again, we're not conscious, we're not present. And so if you go for a run and your intention is to correct um, the negative body image that you had, you looked in the mirror and you're like, ugh, I look like crap, I better go for a run. That is not gonna be a fun run and it's not gonna have positive impacts on your body. But if you wake up and you're like, I have a lot of energy, I feel really strong today. I think maybe a, a run might be a healthy outlet for that. I wanna get stronger. I wanna detoxify my body. I wanna clean my pores. All of those intentions will create something positive out of that run. So we need to be aware of our intention in everything we do. What is your intention when you speak to someone? Are you trying to judge them? Are you trying to elevate yourself by feeling better than them? Or are you trying to share love with them? Are you trying to help them? Do you, do you recognize the light and the beauty and the value in every person you meet? Or are you acting with a negative intention of this is annoying you people? And which is a very unfortunate trend right now. We've got to fix that. So yeah, check out my video on connection. Uh, number nine, mindfulness. Be conscious, be present, be the observer. Act with intention again. So mindfulness obviously is part of intention. We just have to be aware. We have to be mindful of what our intentions are. Be present, especially if you're watching this for your kids. Be present with your kids. The greatest present you will ever give your kids is your presence. In fact, that goes for everyone. Be present with everyone in every situation. If you, if you have eye contact, you share a smile, and you acknowledge, and you, you send the message, I see you, you will make someone's day. Everyone is looking for that connection point, and we, we have this free gift to give away with our presence. And if you struggle with presence, I oftentimes move my fingers, wiggle my toes, you know, it helps us just be in that moment. So I am always having to practice this and remind myself of it. I'm not perfect at it. Just because I can make this list doesn't mean I'm perfect at it. Um, so I'm right there with you. We, we need to, to become more present in every moment. Remember, all that we have is the here and now. The place of creation is the here and now. If we're focused on the past, we're recreating the past. If we're worried about the future, we're creating a negative future. This moment, the present, is the most important thing in your entire existence because this is a creation point. This is the zero point. Be mindful of what you're creating. Be here now. Uh, number 10, self-care. If you don't love you, nobody else will. If you treat yourself crappy, people are gonna treat yourself crappy. So the, the again, as within, so without. If we can't love ourselves, if we are not taking the time to nurture ourselves, we're not gonna receive that in, in return. Number 11, core needs. Your needs are valid. Know your needs. You have to be able to understand who you are and what you need so that you can set up boundaries to say, this is my limit. 
these are the things I need. And if the people around you are not willing to honor your boundaries and, and meet your core needs, then they are not for you. And we need to be able to verbalize that kindly with love and give them a few chances and allow them to meet us halfway. But if they refuse to do that, then we need to love ourselves enough to say, I'm not going to be mistreated and I'm going to find my needs um, are met elsewhere. Um, By the way, a psychologist told me that. So even though I'm not a doctor, I have proof. Let's see, uh, da, 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 da. your emotional needs need to be met just as much as um, your basic food, water, shelter needs. So revisit um, Maslow's hierarchy of needs if necessary. Um, resistance, uh, resistance is a fun one. If you are in resistance to something, you are creating more of it. So what you resist persists. So if you are struggling with a negative thought pattern and you really want to change it and you're telling yourself don't think that way don't think that way don't think that way don't have negative thoughts that's really bad why am i thinking negative thoughts you're pushing against it you're resisting it and you're actually giving it more focus and more intention um or more attention it's kind of like don't think of the elephant in the room what are you going to think about it doesn't work same thing with kids don't touch the hot stove what are they going to do we have to replace it with what to do. We have to, instead of saying, don't think negative thoughts, we just think negative thought or think positive thoughts. We just turn to what we do want and don't fight, don't resist, um, because we're just going to create more of what we're trying to get rid of. Um, joy, joy is something that we do not have enough focus on in our society today. It is our, our guiding light. It's kind of like the flashlight in the dark. When we're not sure where to go, we're not sure what to do, we're looking for our life purpose, we're trying to create with intention, we are not enjoying our life and we want a better life, we want more happiness, we want more peace, we want more fulfillment, not sure how to get there. We need to meditate on what's going to bring me joy. When you're in that moment and you literally don't know what the next step should be, ask yourself, what's going to bring me joy right now in this moment? And that it's step by step, baby steps, that's going to get you to where you want to go. And we will never be able to figure out our entire life purpose, our entire life plan, our our destiny with our brains. It just doesn't work that way. As much as I am a type A corporate personality, all about the five year roadmap, I can, I can create it. I like to see it, but you know what? They change anyways. Even, even in the corporate world, they're never set in stone. There has to be a willingness to know that we can only take that next right step. Just what is gonna bring me joy in this moment? And the next moment, and the next moment, and the next moment. Again, all we have is now, be in the present and say, what is the next right step? What is going to bring my, me joy? That joy factor is life changing when you can use that as your, your guiding light. Um, discipline. 14, 13, 14. Um, Discipline is really, really critical. We have to be willing to honor and respect truth. We have to be willing to be honest with ourselves and, and not lie to ourselves. We have to have the discipline of thought, the discipline of action, the discipline of responsibility, the discipline of self love. All of these things are loving to ourselves. When we do the right thing, when we take the next right step, when we look for joy, when we are honest with ourselves, when we, we, we acknowledge the absolute truth and not just my truth, this all requires discipline. And when we say don't resist things, that also requires a certain balance of allowing flow. We don't become so passive that we're run over either. There has to be this balancing act and we have to have the discipline to be honest with ourselves to say, this is too much laxity. This is too much resistance. Where's my middle ground? Where's my balancing point? We are in labor season after all, as of making this video. Um, No one can do it for you as far as creating the life that you love, finding your life purpose, fixing the past and, and starting fresh no one's coming to save you. I hate to, I hate to say it. I, as much as I 
as a kid really wanted my Disney fairy tale and my knight in shining armor on a white horse to come pick me up and whisk me away from all my problems, it didn't happen. My hero was myself. You are your own hero. I can be your guide. I can be your cheerleader. I can hold your hand. But at the end of the day, nobody has the the roadmap for your life. Only you know what's right for you. Only you can identify what's blocking you. Only you can uh, be honest with yourself and say, this is the lie that I'm telling myself. This is the core belief that I'm choosing. This is the pattern that I am refusing to get out of. You are the only one that can save you and there can be people to help you and I can guide you. Um, But at at the end of the day, nobody's coming to save you. You got to be your own hero. So I hate to break it to you. Sorry. Um, We can't be a wallflower and expect our life to change. We have to get up off the couch. We have to be willing to put in effort and, and I don't want to say hard work because it's really not when we can, the hard part is the resistance, the resistance to change, the resistance to be honest with ourselves, the resistance to do what we know we need to do. But when we get off the couch and we really just go all in and we play full out and we do what we know we're meant to do, it's fun. It's enjoyable. The hard part is sitting over there resisting everything and pretending we don't see it and stuffing it down and not feeling it. It's, that's not... Uh, that's not the picture of your future. It doesn't, your past doesn't have to be your future. It doesn't have to be difficult. There is joy. There is peace. There is happiness. There is fulfillment. There is freedom. It's all available to you when you have the discipline to do what it takes. So that's my list. Um, 15 in all. That is not the end all be all list, of course. Um, someday before I die, we will see these things taught in school. And for now, parents, go love on your kids. Teach them what you can. If you didn't learn this growing up, that's what I'm here for. I am your sounding board. And again, everybody's a genius. Everybody has a purpose. There absolutely is a need for you. The world needs that special gift that only you have. So please, please, please come alive. Let me help you. Um, If all you can do is utilize my free tools below, I've got um, a a superpower finder, which is kind of like your strength finder, um, and a couple meditations uh, to get you started on your way. Otherwise, I have open coaching sessions for now, um, filling up fast. So I, you know, I can only talk to so many people at a time. So if you're interested in coaching, that link is below as well. So reach out to me, comment, let me know if any of these things were new for you, um, which ones stood out for you, which ones are going to make an impact and which ones you're going to tackle first. So comment, like, share, subscribe, and I will see you on the flip side. So much love, my friends. Namaste.